Okay, welcome back. Uh, so we'll uh, get started where we left in the previous uh, video. So towards the end of the previous video, if you remember, we were talking about in general uh, about the combustion facility. So we'll con continue that uh, discussion. We'll continue the discussion on the thermal treatment in this uh, video as well. And uh, here we'll first, uh, as I said, we'll try to look at some of these uh, uh, terminology before we go into like we, we will try to look at different types of. Uh, so far, we focus mostly just on the combustion uh, mass burn or RDF. Uh, so that's that's the most common one. That's the most common waste to energy system, especially when we say waste to energy from a thermal point of view. That's the most common one used. But there are other technologies out there. So let's look at some of those uh, terminology. Thermal treatment, uh, which is uh, one thermal treatment or the incineration. This is uh, one uh, part of that. Like the, uh, it's used as a range of process uh, where essentially what you are doing, you are using temperature to reduce the volume of waste and make it harmless. So the you, what you are trying to do is your, your your temperature is used, you are using the temperature to reduce the volume of waste and to render it harmless. So many times uh, if you look at a hazardous waste uh, sector or even uh, biologic, uh, biomedical waste, we are essentially doing a thermal treatment of that. We are not that much uh, interested uh, from recovering energy or recovering heat from those uh, thermal treatment. Our goal there is essentially to uh, do the to make it less harm, make us harmless essentially. So we don't want uh, that uh, biomedical waste or hazardous waste uh, to be a problem for uh, like a, a human health impact, environmental impact when we are managing it in the environment. So we to make it harmless, you uh, make it you do a thermal treatment. You if you have worked in a microbiology lab or any biology lab, or if you have been to biology lab, or if you are aware of the biology lab, you may have seen that they many of these labs carry an autoclave. Autoclave essentially basically to kills all the bacteria, pathogens, and other stuff. So all the glasswares or other things that we use for uh, doing. Uh, day to day testing of uh, like a biological related testing at the end of the day we will uh, put it in the autoclave, we will clean it up, we will sterilize it so that it is it's, we do not get exposed to uh, some of those bacteria and other stuff. So basically we are killing them. So that is uh, the thermal treatment part of that. So there the energy is uh, uh, capturing energy is not our motto, our motto is to just uh, uh, make things harmless from a biological perspective, from a chemical perspective uh, to make it uh, safe for to handle. So that is the basically the goal in terms of when we say just the thermal treatment and that you hear more about that in hazardous waste class or in a biomedical waste uh, those areas. When we say waste to energy which have been uh, we have been trying to talk about uh, uh, in this particular uh, lecture in this particular like in the previous few uh, free mod, uh, modules when we say waste to energy we are actually looking at uh, it is we are not only making the things harmless but we want to recover heat energy uh, to produce steam and on and or to generate electricity. So our here the goal is to uh, produce and produce heat uh, we can use that heat as an energy source heat could be used directly as uh, I think I mentioned earlier uh, many of these uh, western European countries they have this distic heating system what does that mean is they capture the heat many times from this waste to energy plants as well and use it directly for the home heating or office heating and those kind of uh, scenarios. So that that is also one uh, 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 use of uh, the heat and that is why you hear that many times like uh, the, in the news article that Sweden is trying to import garbage from other countries, other European countries so that it can have its waste incinerator running because if the waste incinerator is not running they will not have enough heat and then they cannot heat the homes or offices. Uh, but uh, either heat can also be used to uh, generate a steam and then the steam can be used to generate electricity. So that is the other so that is the either use the heat directly or you or you generate the electricity. So both can both are possible. So that is uh, what we say in terms of uh, waste to energy. Waste to energy term is much broader as well. Many times even the biogas to energy is also waste to energy. When we try to produce biogas using anaerobic digester or even in a landfill setting that is also is a waste to energy system. Now there are conventional waste to energy uh, which we, we just uh, talked about in the previous video. We have the mass burn 
where you basically take everything together and I'll, I'll show you some sketches of that where you basically the voice comes in whatever is uh, you just pick the stuff which is harmful uh, harmful from the sense that if you have a small cylinder something which will uh, either damage the grates when the grates is where the waste is burned or uh, it, it, it can create some explosion so you just take those materials out your other things you just let it uh, burn you produce heat you use that for steam and electricity and so forth and so uh, like that and uh, keep uh, moving with that or you can have a fluidized bed that's another thing you can have a fluidized bed you can have a modular you can have rotary clean you can use as a refuse derived fuel so all those things are our conventional waste to energy plant then there are some advanced technologies out there which you don't see that much is for municipal solid waste in general maybe part of the municipal solid waste where you have uh, one particular waste, waste stream and you want to do a uh, gasification of that you want to you can do a pyrolysis of that or you can do even the plasma plasma usually is used for very high uh, and uh, for some some like a something which is very harmful and you want you have to get rid of that like a hazardous waste or uh, so there uh, you try to use this plasma because plasma is typically wants at 5000 to 10000 degree centigrade so it's a highly energy intensive so the amount of energy that is needed to have this plasma system going on it's uh, it's quite enormous so we want to make sure that uh, it's not it does not uh, uh, create uh, 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 like if you if it doesn't become a, a energy negative when I say energy negative means uh, the amount of energy that is produced either with uh, it's from the plant is not less than what you have to supply to the plant to run this plant so because even uh, waste energy plants do require energy to run it so it's uh, it's, it should not become energy negative and that's uh, the uh, like the thing in terms of plasma so that's why we don't see that much of a municipal solid waste plasma system uh, in uh, many countries where the waste energy is very popular where it's incineration and thermal treatment is popular because it's highly energy intensive it's costly uh, but it does have an advantage that it makes uh, things uh, very vitrified slag and the so slags uh, it is claimed that it will not uh, it will not uh, leach out uh, heavy metals and other stuff and it, it's a cleaner material and but uh, the research uh, even uh, research done by our group has also uh, shown that it does uh, have some sort of uh, uh, like a leaching going uh, does happen but not to at a very high level but does happen uh, to certain extent So next, uh, what uh, so it's what we do. It's a it's a waste volume is waste volume is reduced. We are preserving the uh, landfill space. So that uh, good thing about waste to energy plants is it helps in uh, preserving of the landfill space. Does not replace landfill actually, but there, there is a need for the landfill, especially if you when the ash that is produced that has to go somewhere. So there is a need for the landfill, but and uh, but does uh, extends the life of the landfill, and then uh, it does help in energy recovery from the solid waste stream. If any bad con like a contaminant is there, it does uh, help in destruction of contaminants, reduces the waste transportation requirement because now you have, uh, as I said earlier, if you have 100 tons of garbage and you pass it through a waste to energy treatment system, you are, uh, you are left with around 10 tons. So if uh, from 100 tons to 10 tons, so, you, so in terms of the transport requirement, the transport requirement is also gone down for this uh, waste stream now. And you are dealing the waste here and now. That's another big area where people uh, make a lot of uh, discussion these days is because landfill is kind of you are leaving the problem for our grandchildren to take care of. Because when we put things in the landfill, first of all, if they are, uh, if it's a typical dry tomb landfill, waste takes a longer time to degrade. And in the next chapter, next. Uh, uh, chapter we will talk about the landfill and uh, we did talk about landfill a little bit in the very beginning but we'll kind of go in more detail so we deal uh, we, we are basically putting things in a uh, big polythene bag and the waste hoping that the waste will degrade over time some do degrade some does not degrade depending on whether in the dry pockets or the wet pockets and it takes a longer time 30 35 years to degrade and then after uh, that also we are not 100 percent sure because there a little bit of gas is still being produced in some of those landfill which is more than 30 years old now and uh, and then uh, we have to kind of manage we have to babysit that landfill for a long period of time so it's it's a it's not a like a many people call it a more like a band-aid solution where you are just a, it's a temporary fix it's not a permanent fix 
uh, waste to energy plant is at least you are uh, you, you are treating the waste, you are making it less harmful, you are making it mostly inert kind of material. Still, some of the leaching and other things could be of a question because uh, you have now high concentrated uh, amount of, uh, because if you think about from 100 tons, if you had some lead over here and uh, essentially lead is non-volatile. So, now that same lead is in the 10 tons. So, effective concentration of lead has gone up because uh, if you look at the mass per kg, uh, earlier say you had X amount of lead. Uh, per 100 uh, kg, now you have that same X amount of lead in uh, 10 kg. So, your concentration has gone up. Concentration gone up means it, it has a, from an environmental risk perspective, it, it could be more harmful. But at the same time, it's uh, it's inert kind of system. So, we, we can probably control that if we know. So, we do have to do some sort of environmental risk assessment uh, if it's we are trying to beneficial reuse this ash outside of the landfill. If it goes to the landfill again uh, over time things may leach out. Landfill typically is anaerobic system and anaerobic system most of the metals tends to precipitate it stays as a hydroxide or sulphide or those things in anaerobic system. So, you do not see that much of a heavy metals coming into the leachate little bit uh, traces you will find, but not in an enormous amount. So, but in future yes, if something happens to the landfill it gets exposed to air, things may become uh, available and we may see some of the leaching taking place uh, as well from uh, uh, this ash uh, in a landfill, but uh, it does. Uh, but uh, in terms of the waste to energy system, uh, we have we are basically looking at something in a waste is being managed here and now. So you are uh, treating the waste and rather than putting it for a longer period of time, as would probably happen with the landfill. So there are different scenarios you can go for. So in the role of thermal treatment plant, in this uh, few say, few slides, we'll try to explain how this uh, thermal treatment can plan can fit in as a part of integrated waste management plan. If you remember few videos back, we looked at the nice uh, uh, two, uh, uh, diagram uh, which was originally from US EPA which explained the different uh, components of an integrated waste management plan. So, if you here we are trying to explain few of the scenarios which can potentially happen. So, it, for example, if you have a uh, waste to energy uh, integrated waste system where you have some uh, part of the waste is going to the landfill. So, here landfill is one of the option and then we have part of the waste uh, going for organic treatment. So, this organic treatment could be your compost or AD. So, you have a part of this going to either a compost or a AD plant or it could be something similar and then we have a good recycling system going on. But in terms of the organic treatment, there will be some residual coming out there will be some residual which you cannot do anything for that. So, you send that to the landfill. So, that is uh, one uh, scenario where you have the recycling, you have the organics treatment and, and then you, you send part of the waste uh, from there uh, to the landfill uh, uh, for uh, disposal. Then in terms of the other option, it could be that uh, you have recycling, you have recycling going on, you have organics treatment going on. Then also you do some sort of thermal treatment, you do some thermal treatment and then the waste from the thermal treatment uh, goes to the landfill and uh, you have part of the waste which could not be either recycled or organically treated or thermally treated that goes to the landfill anyway. So, but the volume of waste and here these individual uh, uh, in this diagram the different uh, uh, width of this uh, different options are kind of giving you some idea about uh, proportionally how they are like it does not uh, 100, it is not to scale, but kind of gives you some idea. So, here the amount going to the landfill is much less and then little bit of amount is also coming from here, but then most of the waste uh, which is either uh, the re it's recycled or thermally treated or organically treated. Of course, for each of those process you will have some of the uh, things going to the landfill. So, that is another uh, way of. So, here this is a good uh, Actually, this is what is uh, most of the ULBs in our Indian scenario, What that is what we need. Uh, we need a good recycling system because recycling, uh, there are certain materials in the recycling which we can use. Of course, there are uh, uh, like a recyclables needs to have market. Uh, in terms of the Indian contest, we are not that much worried even uh, today. Uh, recently, if you remember, China is thinking of banning uh, import of uh, all the any uh, uh, mixed plastics uh, or uh, mixed paper. Uh, so, that uh, that means uh, the market uh, recyclables from say US or Canada and those countries which uh, uh, tends 
which is bigger market uh, for, for them to sell these recyclables as a material, uh, secondary material to the Chinese uh, market uh, that may not be available. So that may lead to some problems in terms of the economics and how things will move around uh, for, uh, uh, for the uh, to, for, for this uh, recycling system. So, recycling again needs to have a stable market. That is a we I have been say I said that several times. So, it needs to have a stable market. If you do not have a stable market then it is a problem. And uh, then organic treatment uh, we uh, if we can as per this is uh, basically if you look at the municipal solid waste uh, 2016 rules uh, that is essentially they also talk about. They do talk about that we should do some recycling uh, which they we should uh, try to do organic treatment because organic treatment is your uh, where you try to do for composting or uh, go for anaerobic digester and then uh, whatever it cannot be recycled cannot be organically treated if it has a good calorific value you can go for thermal treatment and then whatever cannot be done with uh, anything about it that needs to find a place in a landfill. So, we need to have all these four systems in place uh, for a good integrated waste management uh, uh, for any ULB and especially for the smart cities this is would be like a must. We need to make these those 20 or 100 smart cities like a showcase for the entire country. So, we need to have this kind of uh, system in place there and it, it, it can be done because people have done it in the in the western world. So, it is not that it cannot be done just we need to kind of uh, work on it uh, to make it happen. So, so, it is a last uh, thermal treatment usually is considered as a last treatment of waste before uh, landfill disposal or land disposal and uh, we usually put that in terms of the hierarchy we put it after recycling. Uh, it goes uh, after recycling, it is kind of finds its place after recycling and organic treatment. So, we try to do recycling first and then organic treatment done and if the recycling goal is 60 percent then waste to energy can treat balance of the waste. So, if you are recycling where that does include the organics management as two. So, that is uh, if you do 60 percent the rest 40 percent we can send it to a waste to energy plant and the residual there will be always be a little bit of residual which goes to the landfill directly, but then the residual from all these facilities will also end up in a landfill environment. So, it does uh, recover uh, remaining energy it can uh, converts energy into heat energy can be converted to heat electricity can be sold uh, to the grid we can sell, sell the electricity for and then we can have offset fossil fuel use for power generation. So, it also impacts uh, kind of reduces the impact of CO2 emissions. Uh, so, it is uh, so that is there is a positive impact uh, in terms of uh, climate change and all those uh, stuff that is happening uh, uh, along in uh, with, with our uh, uh, environmental uh, environmental different uh, uh, parameters as of today. So, there are a lot of. Uh, so, 1 ton of waste uh, uh, just for some example, if you have 1 ton of waste uh, that can deliver 400 to 700 kilowatt hour of electricity to the grid. So, here we are talking about typical waste on waste. Uh, so, it is around 4500 to 5000 kilocalories per kilogram. So, but uh, in Indian scenario our calorific value will be slightly nearly half of that. So, even if you say half of that we can even if you go for 200 to 350. So, that is not bad through 200 and 350 kilowatt hour of electricity to the grid. So, 1 ton of waste. So, that is not a bad uh, number and uh, it has a so a, again a 1 ton of waste has the same energy as 1 barrel of oil. So, again if it is for the western uh, situation we can say half a barrel of oil that is also not uh, in Indian scenario because nearly our calorific value is nearly half uh, in on average there would be, could be a few places in India where the calorific value could be higher than that. And then um, quarter ton of coal. So, even uh, if it is a one eighth, uh, one eighth of a ton of a coal that is uh, in the. So, it, you have and you have uh, if you have 24 tons of uh, waste that can provide all the electricity for a Canadian home for a year. And this, uh, this, uh, ex, uh, this uh, study was the data came actually from the Canadian contest, but uh, say in Canada we they need much more energy than what we will need in India because they have to heat the home. Uh, they do have uh, uh, like a lot of lot of gadgets going around in the home which does require uh, uh, this uh, energy requirement. Uh, so, so by based on uh, the, so we actually will need much less, uh, especially by, but we need to look at the what is the uh, waste uh, calorific value. So, those those things are there as well. So, if it is a one home for 4 persons uh, 1.5 kg per person per day, 4 person uh, house 365 days, so 2.2 tons. So, 
1.5 kg. So, let us say if uh, in uh, Indian contest say half of that. So, we will have around 1.1 ton. So, but is the, what we are trying to say is that this is a amount of waste produced from individual houses is a significant amount and that can be used to uh, if we can use that for to produce electricity that is actually a uh, good thing to do like because we can capture those uh, energy and then use it uh, for uh, uh, our uh, as part of our regular uh, energy stream. So, how this thermal treatment works? So, we will uh, kind of go into a little bit into technical details of how these different uh, 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 units actually work. So, technology offers different ways of releasing the energy in the waste uh, conventional uh, combustion or waste to energy plant. Uh, we have that. Uh, so, we have conventional combustion and waste to energy. Then we have advanced thermal treatment which is gasification, pyrolysis, plasma system is there. So, waste to energy systems are essentially uh, power plants using waste as a fuel rather than coal, natural gas or uranium. So, with uh, waste is uh, they are using waste as a fuel. So, it is essentially kind of a power plant where waste is used as a fuel rather than some other uh, material being used as a fuel over there. So, conventional conversion color we already kind of talked about mass burn, we did the look at the mass burn, it is the most common. Uh, here there are some examples of uh, uh, Canada plant has been given, do not worry about that. Uh, we do not uh, like there are in, in India scenario most of the plants that we are building in India are also mass burn. So, that is uh, uh, we are using mass burn. Uh, technology the picture that I showed you was also uh, mass burn. You could have fluidized bed. Uh, there is a fluidized bed, uh, its technology is also there mid sized and people use it especially for some specialty application. And then there could be a modular which is a smaller system, you have a rotary clean for the hazardous and medical waste really used for MSW. Then you have RDF which uh, many plants do that and uh, we had uh, many, uh, there are systems out there which makes this refuse derived fuel which can be used uh, for. Uh, uh, pro, like a used as a fuel. So, that is uh, that is uh, done as well. So, conventional waste to energy plant uh, you will have uh, this is just a tip, uh, layout you will prepare the feedstock. So, you have feedstock preparation go and then you will have a combustion. Combustion you will have some bottom mass being produced then there will be an energy recovery in terms of either heat or the steam and then you have the flue gas cleaning. Then you will have some fly ash you will have some exhaust going around and then from the energy recovery you are producing some electricity, some steam and some heat. So, all those uh, different uh, things happens in a conventional uh, waste to energy plant. And if you can just think about uh, if you rather than putting a waste if you just say even coal uh, based thermal power plant this is essentially what happens there as well. It is a coal based thermal power plant uh, it will happen similarly. So, what we have done is replace the coal uh, with a waste uh, material which has high mm, sometimes higher calorific value. Uh, recently, I was uh, we had a uh, like an assignment from uh, Chhattisgarh High Court, uh, if I say that correctly. So, where uh, we were looking at the pollution being caused by this uh, coal based thermal power plant in uh, Raigad area, which is in Chhattisgarh. And so, we went around uh, when I say we like myself and uh, I am a part of the team, I am not uh, I am not the PI on that project. So, we we went around. So, there are 40, we have 4 of us. So, we uh, went uh, to those different uh, especially those are mostly our cogeneration plants. So, it is a steel plant most many times it is a steel uh, plant with has their own coal based uh, thermal power plant. And the thing that we found is for most of the places there were a lot of uh, environmental issues. Uh, there were a lot of things which could easily be fixed. Uh, so, we have uh, we have given them the recommendation for those, but uh, still the coal quality was uh, a big uh, throughout uh, the trip visiting around 13, 14 uh, uh, plants. The, one of the major uh, complaint was uh, the coal, the quality of coal because as uh, in Indian contest we do have coal, but our coal. Uh, calorific value is very low or the coal ash content is very high. So, that is uh, creates a problem in terms of uh, uh, the energy production. So, many times uh, what we do we take uh, uh, the our uh, local coal and then try to mix it uh, with some other coal which is a high calorific value to get a little bit uh, higher calorific value uh, going into the system. So, that is uh, uh, so, it is if we, if we look at this particular stuff. So, rather than if you have a bad uh, 
uh, when I, I should not like if you have a low quality coal, if you have a low quality coal, uh, it is be better to and we have municipal solid waste being produced in the area and then if you have to, uh, we do not have the availability of good coal, this could be used as a energy source. Only thing is that the coal based thermal power plant is kind of designed for a more homogeneous fuel. So, maybe RDF may work on it this better, but uh, that again the legis legislation and all this has to come in picture and the air pollution control system has to be looked into uh, just to make sure everything uh, will be okay, we do not get into any problem later on. So, that is the conventional uh, uh, waste to energy plant and uh, then this is a mass burn facility overview. So, as you can see the waste will come in. So, here uh, if you can watch this, uh, this is again this is from that uh, Amsterdam plant uh, layout. So, you have this uh, truck coming in uh, getting dumping the waste over here, okay, let us see where the truck comes in, where the dumping the waste over here, the waste is getting into this area which is kind of the storage area which can store for uh, waste for a few days and then here you can see the crane, the crane is lifting the waste and then it will drop it over here. Uh, let me clear this up so that you can see it a little bit clearer. So, the crane will actually move and drop things over here where uh, the it will it will pass through this grade system uh, where uh, the reaction will take place and they were all the heat produced will be used for the heat exchanger for the steam and all those different kind of stuff with that. And, uh, and we have this air pollution control system to take care of the air pollution system and finally, things will whatever emission will happen will happen through this stack. So, and so we have this fly ash handling, low uh, bottom ash handling, all those things are part of this uh, uh, system over there. So, it is a mass burn facility, very common. Uh, you see many, many places it is essentially a mass burn. Just a closer view of uh, uh, the grate system, you, this is a roller grate rather than a step grate. I think we talked about that uh, earlier as well. In uh, It is a roller grate. So, and then we will be supplying oxygen. So, the oxygen, sorry. Uh, the oxygen will get supplied from this side. So, you will have the oxygen uh, being pumped in. So, since we do not pump oxygen, we pump air. So, we will be pumping the air through this system. So, the waste will burn essentially in this particular area and once the waste is burned, uh, we will uh, the heat is produced and there is a heat exchanger which will capture those heat and then uh, it will be converted to steam and the steam will be used for uh, electricity production and all that. So, it is kind of similar to a coal based thermal power plant, but there are some issues and there will be always be uh, some dissimilarities because of the, uh, the heterogeneity of uh, the waste material. Uh, this is another one, it is a fluidized bed furnace, uh, where you have a fluidized bed, again you have uh, air being uh, supplied from the bottom. Uh, you can uh, see the air being supplied at the bottom over here, the things are burning and then it uh, produces uh, energy from here. So, fluidized bed with the ash melting. So, we have a fluidized bed where things are burning, uh, it is kind of turning a little bit as well, just some agitation going around and then uh, waste one burns, uh, the gaseous emissions from that kind of goes, uh, goes up uh, into uh, this particular chamber and then it passes and reaches to another chamber. Uh, where it kind of uh, gets cooled down first it uh, things are treated then it cooled down and then it uh, then we will get some fly ash also uh, coming out of that and then the bottom ash will come over here. So, both need some sort of uh, good management system both fly ash as well as the bottom ash. So, that is uh, uh, for this particular type and we will look at some of the other types and then we will. So, this is a uh, modular system, it is a again uh, waste being dumped into uh, here as you can see waste is being dumped into on this place uh, and then it uh, reaction takes place over here. So, the in terms of the reaction as we know from our chemical kinetics the time required for the complete reaction and the time required for the great system to move the waste from this point to this point uh, we have to match those. In fact, uh, the time taken to travel from this uh, point to this point should be uh, uh, more than what is the time uh, required for the reaction. So, that we have the complete combustion rather than an incomplete combustion. And this is a modular system can be taken at different places even at the war zone and other places where you can uh, do those uh, uh, treatment of waste. So, that is uh, 
in terms of uh, that and then uh, so then other thing is our refuse derived fuel a refuse derived fuel is uh, so as we have been saying most of this municipal solid waste is uh, it's a non homogeneous so rdf is a homogeneous so homogeneous it can be uh, with using rdf we can make it a homogeneous mix it can be sold uh, and used off site replacing other fuel it you it is used by cement cleans industry power boilers dedicated waste to energy plant is there which is also using rdf so and then there are at, uh, so let's uh, kind of stop here and then we'll continue this discussion in terms of different types of incinerator and uh, all those uh, like we how what are the uh, benefits and drawbacks of each of those incinerator and what kind of waste can be treated over there so i hope you are enjoying this course uh, we are uh, uh, making uh, we are almost kind of uh, in the third uh, phase of this course now almost getting there in the, so uh, keep uh, focus uh, keep working on the course uh, i know there are a lot of material uh, that you may have to go through but i look forward to having most of you doing really well uh, in the examination and uh, if you are taking one and uh, then of, of course if you have any questions put it in the discussion board and all that and we'll be happy to answer some questions uh, which is more like a outside of the scope of this uh, uh, course uh, I may answer them, uh, but uh, it's but it will be more like a general answer because uh, if uh, I, I don't know what exactly you are, sometimes it kind of get, gets difficult. So those cases I will just let you kind of communicate uh, uh, like uh, using my email address of IIT Kharagpur, and you can just send me an email, and then we can see what we can do about that. But for this course, discussion board is the place uh, for where all the discussions will take place, uh, nowhere else. Not no WhatsApp group, no other groups. This is just the discussion board where we are uh, going to do all our discussion. So with that, let's uh, stop at this particular uh, point, and then we'll continue uh, in terms of looking at uh, other aspect of thermal treatment in the next video. Thank you.